I'm sure I'm, I'm positive that there's no roads. It's pura mentira. Son carreteras que son. There is this clear. Okay. Si tú te pones en contra del gobierno, tú vas a ser perseguido. It was a very dangerous point. Too much. A remote forest at the center of a controversy. This is Yasuni National Park in the Ecuadorian Amazon. Above the ground, a greater variety of plants and animals in a single hectare than in all of North America. Below the ground, almost a billion barrels of oil, a resource that accounts for nearly half of Ecuador's exports. For decades, the industry has been advancing into ever more remote territory. Now the state-owned oil sector, environmentalists and indigenous communities are engaged in a battle over some of the last untouched parts of Yasuni. I travelled to the region to investigate one of its latest front lines. Following up on satellite-based reports, of a 20 kilometer long clearing, looking a lot like a road, in an area called Block 31, where roads had been banned to protect the remote rainforest. The Ecuadorian government rejects any reports of a road. So I confronted the hydrocarbon secretary of Ecuador with the satellite images. Her explanation? I'm sure that from the plane that look as if it was a highway, but there's no need to have a highway. I'm, I'm sure, I'm, I'm positive that there's no roads. No road, according to the authorities. Instead, as the secretary showed me in this Petra Masonas publication, the animals, the birds, the whole... A temporary ecological path built to bury a pipeline before restoring the original geography and replanting the surface. You don't have to have anything in the surface. You know, you rebuild whatever damage you did and it just evaporates. And like I said, it's being monitored by everybody. Not everybody though. The remoteness of Block 31 makes it that much harder to know what exactly is happening there. It's very far place. It's very difficult to go there. And when a group of environmentalists called the Yasunidos tried anyway last year, they found themselves confronted by armed guards and military, forcing them to turn back. The problem is lack of transparency. There is a typical military control of the territory. Oil activities is typical uh, activity controlled by militaries or private security activities. People want to see this area. It's impossible to enter. I decided to give it a try. Getting to Block 31 was a journey deep into the forest. For entire days, traveling in a small boat through the mud-colored waters, we passed nothing but an abundance of animals and dense canopies. As we got closer, we continued on foot. After hours of making our way through the thick undergrowth with a machete. This is what we found. I showed this footage to a team of geographers at the University of Padua in Italy and ask them to analyze it in relation to their satellite data. So this picture shows a, a road segment of the Block 31. Okay, so it was a very dangerous point, too much. So this point uh, before the, the curve and the corresponded to this point H, the, the, width, the width from here to here is about 30 meters. A clearing much wider than the environmental license for Block 31 allows for a temporary trail. The conclusion? 
is nice to tell about uh, uh, ecological trails, but is a road. But what about claims that this is only temporary? So far there are no other examples of oil roads inside Yasuni that had been returned to the wilderness. And so I asked if it was possible to restore the original geography. Yes, if we wait 100 years, we can have the forest, maybe. But the problem is, is a big investment. So when you have a road, you use the road, you improve the road, you open a new road. It's absurd to close a road. When you open the first cut, uh, it's very impossible to come back. Is this a road of no return? The question is deeply worrying to those who call this forest home. Indigenous communities, some of them prepared to fight all developments in their ancestral territories, knowing that the Amazon region is one of the most dangerous places in the world to be an environmental activist, with indigenous communities bearing the brunt of the risks. Eh, a las personas quienes estamos luchando así nos ponen diciendo, mire, si tú persigues, eh, tú vas a ser perseguido. Eh, senderos ecológicos, no sé, es pura mentira, son carreteras que son. Eh, que la que está dentro del bloque 31, ¿qué es? Una carretera. Mi lucha no es por mí, no es por mi papá, no es por mis abuelos. Mi, mi lucha es por mis hijos, por los hijos de nuestros hijos, así en sucesivamente detrás, por ellos. Para que nuestros hijos no, ellos no deberían venir a vivir en un área contaminado. Roads have already transformed other parts of the area. In two decades of running a biodiversity research station inside the forest, Dr. Kelly Swing has seen the effects firsthand. What happens is that a road gives access to the outside so that they can come in and extract things and they can take those to markets. In Yasuni, when we're talking about impacts, we really are talking about impacting more species per square kilometer than any other place on the planet. When you open a road along the roadsides and into the forest for some distance, the truth is that you end up losing at least all the large fauna. The real problem here is that we've already lost so much of that region that we really are coming down to the last remnants. Right next to Block 31, this is one of those last remnants, an oil block called ITT, infamous for a failed high-profile initiative to keep the oil in the ground. Last year, the authorities gave the green light for Petra Amazonas to extract oil here too, making familiar sounding promises. Being where ITT is located, which is such a pristine and the most biodiversified uh, place in, in the world to ensure that obviously you know we will mitigate and do the less damage as we can obviously first class technology is used the near future will tell whether or not that technology will involve any new roads